My name is Ocean Amare. On this channel, we uncover the creepiest, most unusual haunted TikToks the internet has to offer for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Please do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe to the Soul Tribe for your weekly dose of super Supernatural coming to you every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. <laughs> Y'all are my soul trap. Trap is with a Y because the Y is for you, honey. And that's because I love you so freaking much. Yes, I do. <laughs> I appreciate y'all time per usual, honey. And I do not take it for granted whatsoever. Thank you for being here with me. Let me know in the comments, what is your nationality and what is your country? <laughs> if you care to share, okay? Otherwise, let's get into this video. I got a port too, bitch. Ah. Monica Drive. Woo, chow, honey. I got something to say about that, but zoop, I'm not saying it because it involves my own personal situation and ain't none of your business. Okay. <laughs> no, but I had to get a cleansing and get some stuff up off of me, baby. And. Thank you to the Baba Lao who did it for me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Ashe. Ashe. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all. It's me, the money professor. And everybody wants to know, what's an IUL? And I'm going to tell you. So this is you. This is your money. And on average, you take your money and you put it in the bank. And when you put your money in the bank, it's only going to grow at a whopping 0.01%. Maybe it. 0.001%. And while it's in the bank, the bank is loaning out your money, compounding your money and making and keeping all of the money. And what you should do is take that money and put it into an IUL. And what's the IUL? It's an index universal life insurance policy. So when your money's inside an IUL, it is protected and it's guaranteed to grow on an average of eight to 10%. All right. And so when it's in those accounts, the account grows because it is growing on a compound or uninterrupted compound interest. And when it's protected, it's protected because it has a zero percent floor guaranteed, no losses. OK, so when the money is in that account at the same time, it's growing cash value. And when you have that cash value, you're able to spend that money tax free. You can use that money for leverage, such as, you know, college funding, uh, investing in property, or just other cash building assets. You can use that money as income replacement for retirement funding, or even build your own private bank, becoming your own family bank. And at the same time, it's a death benefit. It's a life insurance policy. So this death benefit, you are able to leave a legacy. You also, it comes with living benefits for chronically ill or, you know, critical illnesses. And also it's collateral. You are using this money to pay back this money when you are taking it while you're still alive. DM me more or hit the link in my bio if you are interested in creating your own IUL. Did you know that setting aside as little as $300 from each paycheck into a max funded IUL instead of a 401k can give you $610,000 tax-free money and will provide you with $60,000 a year tax-free in retirement? Comment IUL below if you want more information. If you're open to being a financial professional licensed in your state, please send me an email at essence at tenaciouscashflowacademy.com. Um, I hope that those souls have found peace as well. That is really sad uh, to be stuck in limbo and not even know that you have died. When people die suddenly, they don't know that they have died. And it can be years upon years upon years before they realize that they're dead. And they can, you know, continue living their life as normal, thinking that they are alive. So they'll be around loved ones, at their work, at whatever that their normal everyday was. And living that life. So the 
physical form people like us, we're hearing and seeing and like, what the hell is going on? And not knowing that it's a soul just living their everyday life because they don't know that they are no longer a physical form. So, whew. positive vibes to them, to their families, condolences, and hopefully their souls have been set free and at peace. Uh, reincarnated if possible if that's what they chose or you know maybe they're an ancestor now to their loved ones I don't know how I was set up to be this involved with the spiritual world when I go to sleep at night I have to play gospel music to this day to this day or I'll get attacked and especially when I started like meditating more I felt like the stronger I became spiritually the more I started getting attacked these experiences have always happened to me since I was a kid and I'm laying down on my bed I feel something hella big start walking on top of me I start like crying a deep ass voice it says shut up you know I say Jesus every time or I start praying you know um because that's my way of fighting back. You can't just say stop. You have to say, you know, in the name of God and the name of Jesus. Because that's gonna, that's the person who's going to protect you. It's crazy when, you different, when you're dealing with two different worlds at one time. Because not everybody knows what it right. feels like to have a paranormal experience. Very true. But there are other ways to protect yourself and to remove evil without calling on the name of Jesus. Um... So, yeah, that's, you know, if you're a Christian, then do that. Do you know that some of Hollywood's most glamorous homes hide dark secrets? From haunted mansions to mysterious deaths, the stars aren't the only things shining in Tinseltown. One of the most infamous homes is the Los Feliz Murder Mansion, where a doctor tragically took his own life after killing his wife in the 1950s. Despite its chilling history, this mansion still attracts buyers, some even drawn by the eerie past. Then there's the home where actress Sharon Tate tragically lost her life, a chilling reminder of the Manson family's gruesome crimes. The house was demolished, but its dark legacy remains, with new owners reporting strange occurrences. Even Marilyn Monroe's former home is rumored to be haunted. Her ghost is said to wander the halls, leaving fans and residents alike wondering if she ever truly left. You won't believe what secrets your favorite stars are hiding. If you found these stories intriguing, hit like, share with a friend, and follow for- I don't have part two to that one. Woo chow. Celebrity ghost stories, Miley Cyrus. Miley stayed in a haunted flat during her 2009 European tour. She began having terrible dreams and swore she saw a young boy sitting on the sink while she was taking a shower. The next night, her sister Noah was taking a shower and began to scream. Someone or something had turned the knob all the way to hot, burning her. Her aunt, who was staying in a different room, came back to find all the windows and doors open, even though she knows she left them closed. More and more things were happening, so they eventually decided to look into the building. It had once been a bakery owned and operated by father and son, and Miley swears it was the young boy that she saw. They ended up switching to a hotel and Miley says she'll never stay there again. Do not listen to this story and I, I think this is the scariest one I've gotten so far for spooky scary story time and honestly I hate this story when I read it. It was not nice was like standing on end but I'm gonna share it anyway. Just watch it in the daytime so save it for later if you need to but literally don't watch it tonight because I did and it's freaking daytime. out. The story was submitted by this guy named Tom who told me he wanted to tell me about his experience moving with his girlfriend during 2020. Tom is obviously not his real name. Uh, he wanted to be anonymous, but he will be reading the comments. So Tom and this girl, Michelle, are dating for like three years. They're living in a big city. I don't know which one he didn't see. They live a really good, comfortable life. Tom works in IT, and his girlfriend, Michelle, is an instructor at a yoga studio, and they both do pretty well. They're both really healthy, really fit. They love being social, going out. No mental health issues at all, right? Tom also said that Michelle made a lot of money on social media. She was sort of an influencer, and she did a lot with different fitness brands and she would film a lot in her studio. 2020 hits and Michelle is immediately laid off because the yoga studio closed but Tom was able to work remotely because he was doing that mostly anyway. Their apartment is really expensive and their lease is coming up and they basically decide that they want a quieter life because they don't know how long everything that was going on in 2020 was going to last so they ended up signing a lease for a place that was about 50 minutes outside the city in more of like a rural area he said it was still kind of suburban like there were stores around and places for them to go and get groceries like not super country definitely not what they were used to in the city and when they moved out there they were really excited because it was a change of scenery for them and they were saving money to buy a house so rent was a lot cheaper and they were both happy with the move Everything's fine. Tom sets up in his office. Michelle has the spare bedroom as her yoga studio where she's going to continue filming content. 
and things seemed perfect. A couple months after they move, uh, Michelle decides that she wants to get into gardening. She was obviously already really into health and fitness and wellness, but she decided she wanted to be more into sustainability and was starting to like make more videos about sustainability. So she has Tom go in the backyard and basically dig a giant pit where they're gonna start a compost pile. And Michelle's out in the yard and she's like planting some vegetables that she had gotten and Tom calls her over because his shovel hits this like metal box. So she comes over to look and they pull out this, he described it as maybe like a 12 by six, just metal cash box. And it's all dirty and rusty, but they pull it up and Michelle opens it and inside is a Ouija board. And Tom is immediately kind of like put off by this. Like he doesn't really believe in that stuff, but he also doesn't like it. And Michelle's like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like I'm gonna make some videos on this. And she takes it out and walks back up onto their patio with it and starts like dusting it off on their patio table. They kind of leave it out there, forget about it. And uh, later that night, Michelle's like, oh, do you wanna go play with the Ouija board? And Tom's like, not really. Like, you know, he said that they were really into Tiger King at the time. He just wanted to like watch that and hang out. And she was like more into going outside and playing with the Ouija board. So she's like, well, I'm just gonna go play with it if you don't want to. And he's like, okay, whatever. And he just stayed inside and watched TV. The next day they wake up, Tom logs into his computer to start work and Michelle, he said, was kind of just groggy, which was pretty out of character for her because she's normally pretty bouncy. She was a morning person. She would always wake up at like 6 a.m. with him, but she's just like slinking around the kitchen. And he's like, are you okay? And she's like, I just don't feel well. She's like, I don't think I'm gonna make any content today. I think I actually have been like having the urge to paint. I'm gonna go to the store and get some painting supplies. And he's like, okay, cool. He's working. She comes home with like a bunch of canvases and some paint. And she basically converts like half of her yoga studio into this painting area. And she spends the rest of the day doing that. The next day, same thing. She just wants to paint. She's not really feeling well. Doesn't feel like making content. Doesn't feel like doing yoga. This goes on for like a week and one night he wakes up and she's not in bed. So he gets up to go to the bathroom and then he notices like she's not in the house. So he sees the patio light is on and he walks to the back door and he looks out and he sees her sitting at the patio table playing with the Ouija board. And he opens the door and he's like, Michelle, come inside. Like, what are you doing? And she's just like, oh, like I just... You know, I just wanted to see if I would get anything. And he gets this unsettled, anxious feeling in the pit of his stomach. Because now he really does not like the Ouija board. The next day she's painting and he walks in the room and he's like, hey, like, I think we should talk about the Ouija board. Um, I just, I don't think you should have it. Like, I think you should get rid of it. I just, I don't really like the idea of it in our house. And she's like, you're being dramatic. You know, I'm going through something. Like, it's a fun activity for me. I don't have a lot of fun in my life. My job was shut down. And so he just drops it. And he's like, okay, you're right. Like, I'm overreacting. So later he feels kind of bad. And he goes back in her studio. And she's still sitting there in silence painting. And he said on the canvas, it was just like a bunch of triangles that were all overlapping all over. And he basically tells her that he feels like they haven't really had a good, like, date night, obviously, since 2020 started. He's like, why don't we have a fire in the backyard? We can just like grill some food. Like it'll just be really fun. And she just tells him flat out, no, like she just wants to paint. So he goes to bed and she is still painting that day. So he wakes up in the middle of the night again. She is still not in bed and he hears her talking. So he goes, okay, well, she's just making a video. So he peeks into her yoga studio and she's not making a video. She is still painting, but now she is painted off the canvases onto the walls and it's still the same overlapping triangles on every single surface around her. And he's like, Michelle, what are you doing? And she turns around and looks at him and says, I found the door. And at this point he realizes like she is not right. Like she's having some kind of mental break. So the next day they wake up, same thing. She wants to paint and he calls her mom and he basically tells her mom that Michelle is going through something and she needs to snap out of it. And he asks the, her mom if she'll come and stay with them. Her mom has like nothing going on, I guess, cause the next day she comes and stays with them. And Michelle seems normal when her mom is there. Like she basically pulls Tom aside and she's like, I don't know why you called me. Like, obviously I'm happy to spend time with you guys, but she seems normal to me. And Tom's like, she's not normal. Like I'm telling you, she's not normal. That night her mom comes and wakes Tom up because Michelle is back outside playing with the Ouija board again. And her mom is super religious. So she does not like the Ouija board idea at all. She's like, you guys need to get rid of it. Like, why did you get her this? And Tom's like, I didn't get her okay. for it. We like, we found it in the yard. The mom's like, oh my God, you found it in the yard. And she's like, we are getting rid of this right now. Like we are going to burn it. And she makes Tom make her a fire where they burn the Ouija board. And Michelle just maintains like, you guys are overreacting. Like this is, this is just like a fun activity. Like it's not even serious. Doesn't have any strong reaction to them burning the Ouija board aside from just like being annoyed. So it's the next night, her mom is gonna leave the next day and Tom wakes up in the middle of the night to her mom screaming and he runs out in the hallway and he sees Michelle sitting in the dark, facing the wall, just at the end of the hallway, like facing away from them, sitting cross-legged, staring at the wall. And her mom is yelling, like, what are you doing? Like, get up. And Michelle does not react. Like, it's like she can't hear them. She's just repeating, they're gonna come in, they're gonna come in, they're gonna come in. 
So Tom runs over and grabs her, picks her up, and like basically shakes her. She snaps out of it and she's like, what's going on? And they were like, you were literally just talking to the wall. So her mom has had enough. She decides that she's going to bring Michelle home with her. She's like, I need to take her to church. Like, I don't like this. And Tom can't really argue with her. Uh, he's sad to see Michelle go, but he thinks it's just temporary and he has to work. So he stays at the house when Michelle and her mom leave. I don't know where they lived, but he said it was like within a day's drive and he could go and he visited her a few times and she seemed fine. Apparently at her parents' house, she kept doing weird stuff at night to the point where they had her committed. Everybody is attributing this to a psychological break from the stresses of COVID and her being laid off. Tom is beside himself, but trying to be as supportive as he can. He's in constant contact with her mom. And about two weeks after she gets checked into this mental facility, Tom is cleared to visit her. So he packs up, drives out to the mental hospital. She's sitting in this cool toned room in a rocking chair when he gets there and he walks up to her and he's like, Hey, how are you doing? And she just looks at him and says, you brought them with you. Oh my God, that freaked me out so bad when I read that. Oh my God. Keep sending me these stories. Um, Tom said Michelle still is in this facility. She has obviously gained a lot of weight. She oh, does not wow. do yoga anymore. She does not make content. He said she has completely lost her mind and barely recognizes him when he goes to see her. Wow. A really good one that someone sent me. Wow. I will be adding it to this. Wow. Wow, that is so crazy. Uh, so again, I want to read your spooky, paranormal, crazy, insane stories. So please, 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 please send them to Essence at TenaciousCashflowAcademy.com. I will turn that into a separate segment. So I'll be waiting. I was 11. We moved into this four bedroom house. And I always felt like there was a weird energy in there. <laughs> there was definitely a feeling that there was a presence in the house all the time and that you had company. It never felt like a safe home. The basement was incredibly scary. I remember going down the stairs and thinking that somebody was down there our and basement when and I reached the attic. bottom, I heard keys, like someone was walking towards me with keys. When I realized that I was home alone and there was most likely somebody down there, I flew up the stairs and out of the house. I went across the street to my neighbor's house and actually called the police. Police officers came, and I swore to God that there was someone down there. And clearly there wasn't, okay? <laughs> Man, I miss basements. I ain't even gonna hold you, honey. With this weather here in Tampa and Florida, tornadoes and hurricanes and nowhere to hide underground, and I'm used to basements coming from Pittsburgh, okay, Pennsylvania, up north, Honey, and I didn't had plenty spooky ass basements, plenty spooky attics, and some nice finished basements as well. So I miss basements. I love basements, especially a finished game room basement, honey. Hmm. Anyway, there is a lot of uh, memories today, actually. It's a big day in music history. 35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock. And, and I keep your emotions, and I deal with your emotions over here. But when it comes time for business, I implement what you told me on the... Our first caress. Wendy. I love me some Wendy. She's a bitch, but you gotta love her. She's a legend, period, and she deserves respect put on her name, okay? The one before that one, what was it? Because I was about to say something about it, and now I forget. Hold up. Let me... Oh, Kiki. My girl Kiki, honey, she does that just to do it. Like, she just do weird stuff for her face. Um, I seen her live in an intimate personal concert in Atlanta 
when I went to go visit my mama because that's where she lived. And she always be going to them little wineries. But Kiki was there and she was on stage doing that. Like, because making us laugh and she did that. <laughs> so, that don't mean nothing. She just like rolling her eyes and she been doing that for years. And she be trolling people because y'all think that she cloned because she does that. No offense, I love her, but she's not even a big enough artist to have been cloned. And she got like 12 kids. Ain't nobody got time for that. Who gonna take care of them kids if they clone her? <laughs> House that you in now? The one in LA? Yes. There's definitely a ghost in that. I don't <laughs> care. I'm telling you. I, I be telling party. Offset like, yo, I cannot. Like, there was this one time that I felt like I heard something. So, you know, I got security outside my house. I told one of the securities to sleep inside the house. Yep, you got to sleep in the couch because I swear to God, I hear something. I hear something. I want to know about that story, Cordy, mama. I hate red lipstick. And I put that on to see what it was going to look like. <laughs> so don't judge me, okay? Hopefully I got it all off. But, um, yeah, I don't like it. So anybody who knows me knows that I've always been how I am right now. I've always been inquisitive and I've always had my third eye, aka my first eye, open. Always. But with that being said, so many people ask me, Period. what was that moment or what was that thing that really led you down what they call the rabbit hole? I love getting asked this because then I get to break it down completely. It was her. Bad Gallery Riri. In 2007 is when it happened, when her umbrella video gallery. came out, when she went from the good girl to the bad girl, good girl going bad. Still to this day, the video as well as the lyrics make me cringe. If you've never seen the breakdown of Rihanna's umbrella video, you need to definitely go research that. I'm going to do my best to wrap it up and summarize it for you, but a complete breakdown is definitely going to be necessary. So many know this entity as Lucifer, but in the music industry, they call him the Rain Man. If you're a fan of music, that means that I'm sure mm -hmm. you have heard the Rain Man mentioned plenty of times before. In the music industry, when they're referencing the Rain Man, they're usually going to say Rain Man or just say Rain, or they'll reference something in regards to precipitation. When you hear them reference this entity, that means mm -hmm. they're calling to make a deal with him. Let me show y'all what I mean. I will play the music for y'all just to make it easier, but y'all know TikTok get real funky about their little music. But let's look at Jay-Z's verse. He says, no clouds in my stones, let it rain. A hydroplane in the bank coming down like Dow Jones. When the clouds come, we gone. We Rockefeller. We fly higher than weather. And G5s are better. You know me. Anticipation for precipitation stack chips for the rainy day. Jay, rain men is back with Little Miss Sunshine Rihanna where you at. Okay, so let me go ahead and interpret it for you real quick. No clouds in my stones, let it rain, a hydroplane in the bank. Remember, Jay-Z has taken on Rain Man's energy, so he is Rain Man. So he's saying, let it rain, let the bullshit happen, let the crash happen, a hydroplane in the bank. That means he's above all the bullshit. He's above all the small fries, right? Coming down like Dow Jones. So when he says, let it rain, let it crash, he's referencing the financial industry. And you can tell that by him saying coming down like Dow Jones. Dow Jones is what they look at to see how well the financial industry is doing or when a crash is coming. Mm -hmm. Then he says, when the clouds come, we gone. That means when the storm comes, when the bullshit happens, we out of here. We ain't going to be touched. We Rockefeller. So a lot of people think he's talking about his company because his name Rockefeller. However, we got to think about John D. Rockefeller. Who is that? Mm -hmm. So the Rockefeller family is one of the most powerful families in the world the who really family. has the power to mm -hmm. crash the financial industry. Then it says, in anticipation for precipitation, stack chips for the rainy day. Remember, I told y'all, anytime you're talking about rain, man, they're going to mention rain or anticipation for precipitation or precipitation. They're going to mention that every single time. Then he says, with Little Miss Sunshine, Rihanna, where you at? So she's still Little Miss Sunshine. She still has her light. She's still in her light form because she hasn't been possessed yet. But he's saying, Rihanna, where are you at? Meaning he's calling for her so she can come get some of that energy. Let me show y'all how they depicted this in the video. So as we can see, the top picture, Rihanna is depicted as the devil or the evil entity. 
The middle picture is when she was pure, she was still the good girl or innocent. The bottom picture shows Rihanna as a possessed Rihanna. So that means the energy came into her as she was requesting it to do throughout the whole song. Let me show y'all the part of the video that really did it for me. Like I was completely done and this is what made me not want to watch it ever again. Now at the time, I didn't know what I was looking at, I'm, but I just knew I didn't feel right when I was looking at this picture. I'm like, what is this? this? I mean, I know it's supposed to be Rihanna bending down with her head in between her legs, her arms extended behind her. But don't that look kind of like this? It wasn't until I saw this where I started really putting two and two together. Mm-hmm. Something real sinister going on here. But no, y'all, hold on. It did not stop there. I thought my research was complete. But then I learned about something called backmasking. And that's basically a technique that they use in the music industry to put a message in the music, but you won't hear the message unless you play it backwards. This is meant mm -hmm. to target your subconscious mind because mm -hmm. even though consciously you can't hear the message, mm -hmm. your subconscious mind is definitely picking up on it. So in the part where she says, under my umbrella, mm -hmm. Ella, Ella, A, A, anytime y'all hear anything that's repetitive, that's called a chant yep. that can also be used as a spell. So when you back mask that part, it's saying, where yep. am I in hell? And then the part where it's chanting is saying, ball, 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 ball. Be sure you go ahead and look mm. up what ball means, especially in reference to the music industry. You will hear it a lot. I've researched this video so much mm -hmm. and so long that I could tell y'all front to back every piece of symbolism in this video. But I'm gonna need way more time than what TikTok would allow. In my research for this video, I realized mm -hmm everything is connected everything whether good or bad politics mm -hmm. religion music medicine everything and seeing that video also made me realize that these celebrities are nothing more than puppets they being controlled to push the greater agenda yep. so for my next round of videos we gonna dissect yep. their agenda but i gotta be smart about it this time y'all and i might have to make y'all a she needs a round of applause because her knee yep yep adele's house is like a horror movie set on the surface this house is like a whimsical celebrity home dream it's on i think like 85 acres just absolutely stunning it was oh. built around 1900 and um, totally redone in the 30s. So far, we're just talking about a fabulous house, okay? In the 70s, the home was turned into a convent. Um, we don't have a lot of details about that time period, but we do know that the house was totally redone into like a 13 bedroom mansion. I don't know that Adele did that or if someone else did, but uh, Miss Adele said that this house is so haunted that she requires security for her house. She has like people that she is literally hiring because she feels so scared in this house. She said she constantly heard things throughout the night. Things would randomly start falling off the walls. And listen, when you live in a space that enough souls have passed through, it's it's honestly just bound to have some spirits in it. And you can kind of tell like if it's a spirit that is vibing with you, looking after you, or they just want you out. And if you have to hire security, they want you okay. out. Rose bushes are beautiful, but it's gonna be a no for me, thanks. It's gonna be a hell to the naw for me, okay? Celebrities that see spirits. I personally know you put the work in. So, um, I... No, 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 it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, you got it's good. Yeah, it's kinda weird. Ah, weird. Hello. Um, oh my goodness, hello. Ew, strawberry. Oh, um, yeah, it was a weird. Leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of uh, memories today, actually. It's a big day in music history. 35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock and roll. And as Mark Cohn says in his great song, Walking in Memphis, there's a pretty little... So, the one with Cardi B, where she was at the award show, and she was talking about her coochie, and then she was like... 
if you ever notice in the background, her sister, Hennessy, and I don't know if that was her handler at the time or a cousin or the dark-skinned heavyset chick that was in the background next to Hennessy, they seen that shit and they, they looked up, but it was like something told them to mind their business. You could see Hennessy like, and you could see the other chick doing the same thing too, like, as that happened to Cardi. Go back and watch and rewind. You'll see. And that footage with Wheezy, I've never seen that before. But he clearly saw something. Um, I always believed that Wendy, when she passed out, she saw something. And, um, yeah. Um, whether it's in their mind or they physically seeing something. Something taking control and they saw something. But you reached the end of another video. <laughs> I appreciate y'all for being here with me per usual. I hope you enjoyed this celebrity paranormal story time, baby. And um, yeah, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell thing so you get a notification every time your girl drops another video and you know what to do with it. Give it to who? Everybody you love and everybody you don't, okay? Because anybody can't get it. <laughs> Again, if you need to contact me for business, for sponsorships, for story times that you want to send me, go ahead and knock that in at essence at tenaciouscashflowacademy.com to reach out to me on the social medias. All links are in my description. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend. And... Ashe, I'm out.